Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you guys how I use my pen tablet to make notes on my laptop. I hope this video will be useful for the beginners who are interested in digital note taking but want to try it on their laptop. If you're new to this channel, my name is Shiv and I'm a final year medical student. I've been using this pen tablet to make my medical school notes for over two years now and I personally think that this is a really good option for those who don't want to buy an iPad but want to try out digital note taking. So without further ado, I'll just show you guys the pen tablet that I use. So this is the pen tablet that I've got at the moment. It's the One by Wacom pen tablet in the size small. In the box you will receive a pen tablet, which is what you write on. A pen which has buttons on it for you to set different settings on it. And also a wire to connect the pen tablet to the laptop. In my situation, I've also had to buy a USB-C to USB adapter to connect the pen tablet to my laptop. And how it all works is you just write on the pen tablet and once you hover your pen over the pen tablet, you can see the cursor move and you just have to press on the pen tablet to write. So I've showed you guys my Wacom One pen tablet quite a few times, but actually there's a lot of choice out there when it comes to choosing a pen tablet. And there are a few things you might want to consider if you're willing to spend a bit more on a pen tablet. So some of the key things you might want to think about is whether you'd like a wireless pen tablet, whether you'd like buttons to be on the pen tablet itself, and what size pen tablet you'd like to use for your note taking. So if you'd like your pen tablet to be wireless, there is a pen tablet that uses Bluetooth, so you don't need a wire to connect the pen tablet to your laptop. These pen tablets do cost a little bit more money, but if you really value having a wire-free workspace, then you might want to consider this option. Another thing to consider is if you would like buttons on your pen tablet. On this one here on the screen, there are buttons at the top of the pen tablet. This can make life a little bit easier because you have easy access to buttons that you can set to whatever you want it to. So if you have a pen tablet like this, you can go into the settings and choose whatever you want for those buttons. For me personally, I used to have it as Command Z so I could undo things quite easily. I also set one of them to act as a shortcut to an app such as OneNote or Google and I've also set another button to act as a right click for me. Since my current pen tablet doesn't actually have any buttons, I simply use my left hand to hover over Command Z to act as my alternative. So overall I don't think it's really necessary to have the buttons, but it is a useful feature to have if you're willing to spend a bit of extra money on your pen tablet. And another important factor to consider when it comes to buying a pen tablet is which size you would like to buy. So people often ask me whether they should buy a medium or a small pen tablet. For me personally, I have a 13 inch laptop and I've always worked well with having a small pen tablet, so I've never really felt the need to buy a medium one. However, if you have a bigger screen or would like a bigger workspace when it comes to using a pen tablet and don't really mind the size in terms of portability, then a medium one also would work quite well. So now I'm going to talk about how to set your pen tablet up and which settings I use when it comes to note taking on my laptop. So firstly, you'll want to install the correct driver for your laptop. So for me, I have a Wacom pen tablet, so I'll go onto their website and install the correct driver. And once I've downloaded this, I'll go into my system settings and you'll be able to find the settings for your pen tablet. Here you'll be able to adjust loads of things to do with the pen, um, the buttons on your pen tablet, and this will make your note taking experience a lot better. So when it comes to changing the settings on your pen tablet, I think that setting something for the buttons on your pen is quite important. As you can see on my screen, there's so many different settings you can choose for the buttons on your pen tablet. So as you can see, you can choose it to act as a shortcut, it can become a command, you can set it to become an eraser, you can use it to navigate, whether that means going back, forwards, scroll, zoom in or out. Um, you can also set it to open up applications, um, etc. So there's so many different settings you can choose for the pen tablet, but this all depends on personal preference. But the two settings that I think have really helped with my note taking is using one button to act as a pan slash scroll feature. So this means that when I hold down a button, I can pan or scroll across the screen as I'm writing. 
This just makes the whole note taking process run a lot more smoothly and it just makes taking notes a lot easier. I've set my other button to act as an eraser so when I press that button my pen becomes an eraser immediately so I don't have to actually click on the eraser to do it. So it just makes erasing stuff a lot quicker. So I have had a few comments saying that their pan and scroll feature doesn't work on their pen tablet. So what you can do in this situation is use your other hand on your trackpad to navigate across the page as you write. Of course this isn't as good as the pan and scroll feature of the pen tablet but it definitely does work quite well if you are willing to give it a go. So here's a clip of me doing this in real time. So another useful feature that you can change on your pen tablet is the feel of the tip of the pen. So you can choose between making it quite firm or making it quite soft. First I'll just show you what a firm pen would look like. So when it's more firm it means that you have to put a lot more pressure on to make it thick. So you get a lot more variation between a thick and thin nib. When the nib feels soft it, it's a lot harder to achieve a thin line. And when it's medium you get a nice in between. Um, personally I opt for something between medium and firm just so I get a lot of variation in the thickness and this is more for people who like to have their handwriting look a little bit nicer on their notes. On the settings you can also choose the orientation so you can choose whether you want your pen tablet to be landscape or portrait. Um, for me I've always preferred to have it landscape to match the screen quite well. So when it comes to using your pen tablet a lot for note taking, you'll want to think about changing your nibs. So they do wear out um, depending on how much you use them. So with the pen tablet you'll get a metal piece that will help you take the nib out. As you can see here, I accidentally flung it across the screen. And you can just replace it with new nibs once it's wore out quite a bit. In terms of how frequently I change the nibs, this really depends on how much you use them. I tend to change my nibs once every three months and this is with daily use of my pen tablet. I buy my pen tablet nibs from Aliexpress but you can also buy them from Amazon. And that's everything I wanted to share in this video. Please let me know if you guys found this video useful down in the comment section below. I hope this video has helped you guys set up your pen tablet and get started with digital note taking. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.